Okay, let's work some problems. E11-2b, this is uh, not exactly in your book, but can be found in your book very similar to uh, E11-2. Um, on June 1st, D Company borrows 150000 from Second Bank on a six-month $150,000 8% note. Um, so the first thing I always do when I'm solving note problems is figure out what would interest be for the whole year and then what would interest be for one month. So to figure out interest for the whole year, we got to remember that uh, interest rates are always stated in an annual form per annum. And so let's go ahead and say uh, 150 times 8%, and that equals 150 times 0 0.08, uh, $12,000. So we'll go back over here. $12,000. Now that would be um, interest for an entire year. So to figure out what interest for one month would be, we just simply take the $12,000 and divide it by 12, and that equals $1,000 basically per month for interest. Now, let's go ahead and do some journal entries that we have this basic information down. A is to prepare the entry on June 1st. So um, on June 1st is when we basically have the borrowing, the note being issued. So let's go ahead and say 6-1. Um, we are getting cash, cash is going up. So let's go ahead and debit cash for 150,000. And then notes payable because now we have a debt, a liability of uh, 150,000. And that's all for um, part A. Moving on then to part B, uh, prepare the adjusting entry on June 30th. So um, it's June 1st when we started this and we're preparing an adjusting entry on June 30th. So what this looks like to me is that um, we're making an adjusting entry on June 30th, but I'm looking ahead to number C to see what's going on here. Prepare the entry of maturity December 1st, assuming monthly entries have been made through November. So remember that adjusting journal entries get made every time financial statements are prepared. So if you prepare financial statements only annually, then the only time you're making adjusting journal entries is on 1231. If you're preparing financial statements quarterly, then you prepare them at the end of every quarter. So um, at March 31st and June 30th, so on and so forth. In this case, it looks like we're making our AGEs, our adjusting journal entries, monthly. So things will accrue and then get paid off. Um, well, they'll accrue each month. So that's important to know when you're solving one of these problems, when um, adjusting journal entries are getting made, and that's going to be based on basically how often you're preparing financial statements. So this is a monthly um, situation, and so we got to prepare the adjusting journal entry on June 30th. So let's go ahead and put 630. And um, there's no cash involved, because remember, when you pay a note back, the, the note's going to be paid back and the interest all at the same time. So it's only been one month. So we don't have any cash involved, but we do have interest expense, because during that month, we do accrue interest. And then we have this liability, which is the current liability of interest payable, interest that we have to pay um, when the note becomes due. And so we know that each month is $1,000 because we already did that calculation. So interest expense for one month is $1,000. So we'll go ahead and record that. Oops. And that's part B. So part B is done. All right, let's go on to part C. Prepare the entry at maturity. December 1st, assuming monthly entries have been made through November 30th. So basically what they're saying here is if we draw um, a T account and say um, interest payable, every single month that goes by, we're going to have this same adjusting journal entry month after month after month. So we'll have that adjusting journal entry um, for all of six months because it's a six month note. So effectively you can imagine this journal entry right here being done six times. And so 
if this is being done six times, effectively what we're going to have over here in our T account is $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, six times, so that the total ends up being $6,000. So that's what they're saying here. For parent entry, assuming monthly adjusting entries have been made through November 30th. It means we've already done all of these entries. So even though we only did it once for the problem, they've been doing these entries for the entirety of this note. Okay, so we have six thousand uh, dollars accumulated in interest payable and they're asking us here on this problem now prepare the entry at maturity. So December 1st, 12-1, we're going to have um, several things happen. First, we know that we're going to pay some cash out. So let's go ahead and record the cash first because I always like to start with cash. And the amount of cash we're going to pay is the note back plus six months interest. So six months interest would be 1,000 times six, six months interest plus the note. So the amount of cash we're going to pay in this situation is going to be $156,000. And that'll be the cash for the interest and that'll be the cash for the actual note of what we borrowed. Then we need to figure out what else we need to do. Well, in addition to this interest payable, we've got to get off the books. We'd also have notes payable. They got put on the books right here, right? So notes payable ended up getting put on the books here for 150 at the beginning when we signed the note. And so we should be able to take both of those off uh, notes payable and interest payable. The notes payable is going to come off the books for 150 which again you can see got put on the books right there. And so uh, notes payable is going to be debited for 150000 And interest payable is going to come off for 6000 because um, we've accrued it already monthly. Now, last piece, I did leave a space here because a lot of the problems we end up doing are going to have one more component that's interest expense. So anytime you have a, a problem, a lot of times there'll be interest expense that you plug in right here on this spot um, to record basically any interest that's been paid at this point that you have not accrued at this point. Now, because we're doing adjusting entries monthly, in this particular case, we have no un, uh, interest expense that's been accrued that hasn't been paid. This is the full amount of the interest expense. On December 1st, when this thing matures right here, we've already accrued interest through November 30th. So between those two points, there's no time. So no interest expense is actually going to be accrued in this point. And so our journal entry um, is actually done without having to do that interest expense component. So I could have left um, no, no gap here, but I wanted to explain that point specifically because in some cases, especially with annual or quarterly journal entries, it's very possible that part of this particular payment will include interest that was never accrued here. And so you'd have to put it as interest expense right on that space. And so uh, be wary and mindful of that if you have to have interest expense or if you don't. Um, so the last question, part D, is basically what was the total financing cost? Financing cost basically just means total interest. Oh, there it says right there in parentheses, interest expense. And so the total interest expense we have, even though for a full year would be $12,000, it's only a six month note. So as we figured out over here, six months, basically $1,000 a month times six, the financing cost is $6,000. So the answer to part D is in fact $6,000. Hope this has helped. Uh, we'll move on to some more problems here shortly.